Okay, welcome back. We're picking up where we left off at before. Uh, and it was with this... Uh, I think this game was called uh, Crossroads Inn. It was a... It was a... Uh, not a third-party game, but a uh, indie game. Uh, the game is actually a lot of fun up until you complete your inn, and then it just kind of gets boring. Uh, I hope the developers eventually fix that, because the, the, the building the end part was fun. That was You could have so much fun with that. It's just, once you got done with the main inn, that was it. And it just it got boring after that, so kind of depressing. But anyways, enough of my little rant on that. Anyways, using this as an example for world building, this is another different one that you want to cut, you know, or that I'm using as an example, and it's an interesting... Uh, thinking of. It's an interesting look into uh, Hold on. Brain, brain went into pause mode here for a second. Okay. It's an interesting one because it allows you to go through here and learn how to describe the inn. Is it a traditional inn? Is it a fancy inn? What is the floor layout? Like it's got fireplace over here. It's got a couple of shields on there. What are these these th shields? Because these are coat of arms. You can see that. They're, they're a coat of arms. Are they decorative or are they representative of the country that they're in? Uh, you've got a chandelier here. What is the chandelier like? Is it electric? Is it candle powered? In this case it's candle powered. Um, what kind of tables do you have? Well this one, this isn't a picnic table design. This is, you, as you can see, is a two part design. You have the two-legged bench and then you have the two-legged table. Um, you have a question of the patrons. You have uh, like these look to be kind of like savages. You've got farm workers. You've got tradesmen. Uh, there was somewhere in here there's knights. Uh, this bar table is actually kind of interesting uh, because it's not your traditional bar like you would have in a tavern. Uh, this one has a uh, this one has well okay depend it, it's not typical but what's behind it is but yeah if you look at this it's it's not a typical bar uh, table. It's got like uh, it's got this decorative cloth it's got some candles on it for lighting uh, it's got the kegs behind it. What are in the kegs? Is it all ale? Is it ale, wine, uh, root beer? You know, what is in these? Uh, and this one doesn't really show it, but you got like back here, you've got your storeroom and your shelves. What's stored back here? Is it like uh, cured hams, uh, dried cured beef, uh, vegetables? Because those may or may not be relevant to your story. You know, like depending on what the food is, you may you may just say, "Yeah, he threw down a plate of meat and vegetables," and that's all you have to tell him. In other cases, you might be it was smoked pork and it was done by the king's the king's own butcher, and it's of a certain vintage, and it's got the you know, it was pigs from a certain breed, and this breed is you know highly valued in the kingdom, and th you know, like I say, it just depends on how detailed you want. Uh, you've got beds over here. Uh, they've got a stairs up to a second level. Doesn't show it here because it's you know you're only uh, viewing the first level. In this game, you can view each of the levels individually. But uh, you got a staircase going up to the bedrooms. What are the bedrooms like? Are they very Spartan? Are they detailed? Are they elegant? Are they simple? You know, is there something special about the various people in here? The 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 people serving the tables, the the customers. Uh, do you have rogues in here? You know, do you have thieves? That kind of thing. And if you look down here, I, because of the you know because of the game, you can see a bunch of the different things that they have in their inventory. So that that right there in this example image could give you some ideas. Uh, you know, like sugar and grapes and and sausage and flour and pumpkin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that would be good for some of your foods. Now, here's an interesting one. I borrowed this one, or took this screenshot off of a uh, off of a music video. Uh, and it's just a little bit of a side note when you're writing, cer writing certain scenes. Having 
a uh, having music playing in the background is actually very useful. Uh, I've had with certain scenes that are action scenes, I've actually had relevant music playing in the background. Pirate music, uh, you know, fantasy battle music, uh, epic music, stuff like that. I've had a bunch of that kind of stuff playing in the background. Uh, and it really comes down to what is the what will set the mood for you. Uh, sometimes I will have just like relaxing guitar music in the background. I will have uh, classical music. Uh, then it's just like I say, it really depends on what you're writing and what you need to have to set the mood. If it's something calm and fun and you know just kind of chill. Yeah, just, uh, you know, have something calm and fun and chill in the background. If, like, an ogre jumps you and now you're into a sword fight, switch, you know, switch soundtracks. It's okay to have that, and it, and it does actually help because it gets you in that mood for what you're writing. Uh, now, with something like this, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but if you're looking at this scene here, it's clearly you know, a sea battle. You've got the, the cannons blazing, the poor rigging is in horrible shape. Uh, these guys have a lot of the rigging pulled in, which means they're not looking to fly past each other. They're they're really kind of just, let's stay in place, do a little bit of maneuvering, but generally just beat the living tar out of each other, which, I mean, if you look at this ship over here compared to this ship over here, this dude's going to be doing some serious ownage on this ship. This ship is just going to get tore up because his gun count is probably going to be a third of what this guy is. This right here would be like a man of war, and this would be a galleon. Man of war is just going to take a galleon and eat it for breakfast. Uh, but you've also got this guy over here flying in a different direction. And if you notice, this one has a British flag on it. I think it's British. It's either Brit Britain or Australia or one of the other kingdoms. But... Uh, you know, you want to look at it like, who's up in the crow's nest? Uh, what flag are they flying? What kind of ship is it? Because like I say, this right here in an, an, an ocean-going uh, fight is going to determine who wins. Because you, you got like, you know, this man of war over here, you know, over here just chewing this galleon to pieces. Because he's got way more guns. Uh, you know, and you look here, you got a few of the guns that aren't firing. Did they, did they misfire? Uh, were they told not to fire? Have they not fired yet? Uh, got another ship in behind him that's on fire and burning, probably because this guy just got done having, you know, te tearing him a whole new one. You know, what damage is each ship suffering? What are the sh seas like? The, you know, the seas are fairly calm. I'm not seeing a lot of wind. What I am seeing is a lot of debris in the water, which is going to affect these ships, because, you know, if you've got other ships that have already been torn up and sunk and stuff... That's going to affect this battle. Uh, the skies are kind of dark. I mean, they're a little bit bright over here, but they're a little dark here, which to me would indicate an incoming storm, so that's going to affect the battle. Uh, you've got, you know, all the different nature elements. Uh, you've got an overturned, what looks like an overturned uh, rowboat here. That could also be related to this, that, you know, it's one of the ships that was tore up maybe by somebody previously, and it's upside down. Well, he, where he's sitting at, if that's the case... Now you've got a very hard target that this thing is coming up against. That it could, you know, it's already bad in bad enough shape because this thing's tearing it up. Uh, you know, and if it hits that, it might break the keel and down goes the ship. Uh, and one other thing you want to look at too that you may not have noticed is you've got this row and this row here that are on the on the same level as the two gun decks on this galleon. These two, who are they firing at? They're firing, unless they're shooting at the masts and trying to demast this thing, they're going to be shooting over it. Are they shooting at somebody on the other side? You know, that's the next question. Are they, you know, is it some, because you also got these top guns here. Yeah, these guys really aren't doing much for this battle. So what are they shooting at? Are they shooting, you know, like double dipping here where these two are taking care of this guy and these three are lobbing across him to somebody on the other side who they want to work over to? So, something else to consider. Now, here's another fun scene. This one is kind of, you know, 
to me, this is, you know, how do you describe the imagination of children? You know, you've got the parent out here and the other parent over here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a plant or what that is. The image isn't clear enough to tell, but you've got you know, normal house setting. You know, mom's over here talking with one of the kids. And you've got, then this might all be, you know, these might all be siblings, if it is. Somebody's been productive, but, uh, <laughs> and it might be just a whole bunch of friends, and they're in a, they're in the be master bedroom where the parents live, which I wouldn't think that's the actual master bedroom, uh, because there's no way to close that off and isolate it. So I'm doubting that's the actual master bedroom, but maybe, you know, maybe they're in the room, and this is, they're, ima you know, they're in like a side room, like a recreation room or something, and they're imagining this. As you see the pillows floating, teddy bears floating, two of the kids are way up here, you've got these kids down here, one of them's laying in the bed. So, you know, they might be imagining all of this. You know, if they are, can you describe this? Can you describe what they're feeling? Why are they floating? What are they imagining? Why is the sky like an open galaxy scape uh, or starscape or whatever like that? You know, but the, this one again goes back to getting behind the eyes of the people in the scene. You know, like another one you could ask is, why is she out here with mom and not doing anything really exciting or interesting or anything like that, but they're in here, you know, hooping it up, playing and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a family dynamic there you could play with as well. Uh, this one would go into a lot of character stuff. Who is this? Why are they dressed this way? Why are they standing out here? What are they standing in? Is this a river? Is this snow? Uh, is this just rock? This could be like dirt here and then this is exposed rock. Maybe like the water washed away the dirt and you're seeing like a white stone. Uh, you've got this kind of... Uh, it's not Devil's Pile, like what you'd have uh, with Devil's Mountain out in the uh, western United States. That big cone-shaped... Uh, or chimney-shaped pile of, uh, like, uh, hexagonal-shaped rocks. Devil's Pile, what it is, it's, it's a type of lava that cooled slowly. And it, and it cra and when it, as it, as it cools, it separates. But it separates into these uh, six-sided hexagonal uh, columns called Devil's Piles. Don't ask me why they called them that, but they called them Devil's Piles. Anyways... They, uh, you know, that could be Devil's Pile, if it is. Is this rock like lava? Is this, did this used to be a volcanic mountain and it's just eroded away and this is what you've got? Was this a lava flow from something else? Was this a super volcano? Uh, you've got the trees here. What are these? Are they pines? Are they maples? Are they something completely unique? Are they, a, you know, when I say they, they're pines, are they a type of spruce? Are they a type of magical... Uh, tree, you know, you cut them down, you make wands out of them. Uh, you know, like I said, you go back to this guy. Who is he? Is he a court magician? Is he a philosopher? Is he a knight? Uh, is this his squire or his apprentice? Uh, you know, why are they out here? Things like that. It, again, it's just it's looking. You know, you can do it with example images, or you can do it when you're just building building using an image in your head, and because you have to take what's in your mind and put it onto the paper. And that's some of what I'm sh trying to show here with this. This one here, I'm not going to go through this one with you guys, but this is kind of the same idea. A little bit different than the previous, uh, you know, kind of cabin type thing, but, you know, you can go ahead and pause this. Look through it. See what you can describe. See what kind of ideas you can get. Um, you know, what what is it in here that that is, you know, interesting, maybe that's unique to your world or something that is common in your world, like, for example, the window or the, you know, the fireplace type and stuff like that, and the antlers and the lights and all that stuff. Are these lights magical, etc.? So, anyways, I'll pause for a second here so you can pause the video and, you know, just do a little, uh, you know, like I say, I'm not going to go over this one. I will let you go over this one and use this as kind of a a practice for describing it and, and yeah it's a little dark you can brighten the screen a bit if you have to uh, to see it a little better but you know describe this in your mind picture this in your mind what you know and build a world off of it or maybe just you know maybe not a whole world but maybe the foundation for it so 
Oh, anyways. Okay, on to the next item. Now, this goes back to character building. Uh, this one I think I got off of another one of those music videos where this was included. Uh, this wasn't actually related to the music video, it was just kind of included in that video and I, it was the only way I could capture it because I've seen this one before and I lost the other copy so this was the only one I could get my hands on. Uh, this one's another one where you're, comp you're doing character building but you're doing it in a kind of a companion setup. Uh, you've got this girl here, she's in a winter coat, she's in winter pant leggings and, and fur boots. Uh, they're out in snow, they've got a warm fire, they've got some food roasting over it. And you've got this big silly white puppy dog back here. Uh, I don't know if you could call this a dire wolf because I don't think it's a wolf. But as you can see he's being kind of silly and he's got this, this fake set of horns on him which is just basically a, a dead limb. It's got a bell over here, she's got a harp. Um, now the funny part is it's got flowers here. So is this winter or is this a late spring snow? You know, something to think about because that's a that's a little minor detail right there that you got to pay attention to. Um, you know, another thing to look at is what is their relationship? Clearly, they're good, they're close friends. Uh, they they have a very friendly, loving relationship. Uh, is this like a snow fox, a gigantic snow fox? To me, it would be more a fox than it would be a wolf. Uh, you know, it's, let's say it's a gigantic white snow fox. You know, are they magical? Are they ordinary? Can they talk? Uh, did she raise them from a pup, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You know, again, it gets down to character building, and you're asking a lot of your questions to try and uh, build a description of who they are, why they're there, and so on. Now, this is another one. This one's kind of a, a fun one. This is like uh, a little simpler. If the other stuff was a little too complex for you, this one's a little simpler. Um, you're basically just describing a headshot of a dragon. And you've got like the, the scarf he's wearing. Why is he wearing a scarf? Uh, is it just decorative or does he need it to stay warm? I would assume given his body form, he, it's probably just decorative. Uh, it might be, he might be in a cold climate, so it's both decorative and functional. But since the rest of his neck is not covered, it's probably more decorative. Just, you know, decorative and seasonal because it might be cold. Uh, he's got like a front armor plate. Is that bone? Is that, you know, like uh, a type of scab? Is it uh, just his regular skin and it looks armor-like? You know, it's just like a regular, you know, lizard-like skin, which is going to be a little tough on its own. But, you know, how tough is it? How does it function? Um, the back here appears furry, which is not normal for a dragon, especially since he's got a gigantic beard here. And he's got what I would jokingly call an Amish beard because they always have just the lower part, but they don't have the upper part of the, of the beard or mustache or facial hair. So... And then you look at these ears here. They're, the ears are kind of canine. He's got a short snout. He's got beautiful blue eyes. Uh, he's got some really scary teeth. You know, you could ask yourself, why has he got the pumpkin in his mouth? And that could go along with this down here. Uh, the fur here, since it doesn't describe the environment, maybe the fur is, tell, uh, is, you know, is a tell on where he lives. Maybe he lives up in the mountains. Uh, why is he red? You know, why is he chomping on a on a glowing pump or jack-o'-lantern? You know, this one right here is a would be a fun one to practice with and how to describe it, and make it interesting. You know, maybe somebody gave it to him as a gift, maybe that's his lunch, and it just happens to be a jack-o'-lantern that he found somewhere and he's gonna mow down on it because he's hungry, because I'm pretty sure if you look at the size of the head and neck, this dude's pretty good sized. So if you if you have the jack-o'-lantern for scale, um you know, this is this is probably his head's probably gonna be pretty close to the size of a golden retriever or so. So big dude. And last but not least, this isn't actually so much for the description as it is for a final tip for you guys, especially you in the sci-fi writing world. 
uh, although it does apply to everybody else too, just not quite directly. Uh, one big thing about writing is if you're going to write, especially science fiction, if you're going to write it, know your science, know what you're writing about. And I got to say that goes back into you know other types of writing like fantasy and stuff, especially historical. Uh, know your science, know your history, know the world that you're working in. Uh, if you're creating it entirely from scratch, you still need to know it. Uh, you might have to live in it for a while. You might have to role play. Uh, you might have to, you know, in your mind's eye or, you know, maybe you act it out where you're walking down the street. And you smell the smells. Somebody's baking bread. Oh, it's cinnamon bread. And I can smell the butter in it. And it's special butter from the northern regions. And it just smells so rich and delicious and oh it's got some apple in it and you know things like that I'm probably over here making you hungry of describing that but that's you know that's part of what you need to do as you're writing it you know and you know it's like that like I was saying though that with uh, with knowing your world take a look at this here you got like with the you know like with Earthly a lot of what happens is inside of individual solar systems especially the uh, part with the fleet and the society it's in you know it's in soul space it's inside of our solar system but you also have to remember our solar system is inside a local neighborhood which is inside a galactic realm which is inside a local group which is inside a supercluster so you got to consider all that most of my stuff though with earthly does not go past a galactic realm the darn it the only thing, the only time I go past that is when is in Dark Earth where they jump from uh, Milky Way Galaxy over to the Pegasus system and back. That's it. Other, other than that, they stay within the Galactic Realm, which is the uh, Milky Way. And even then, that's a lot for me to handle because there's so much in that universe and so many races and so much technology and everything like that. But, you know, if you're just starting out, you know, like I say, you, you need to know your stuff. And like I say, if it's if it's sci-fi, you need to draw from regular science. Uh, if it's sci-fi that kind of bends the rules, okay, that's fine. There are some rules that will not bend that will be a constant, even in other universes. Uh, if you do bend the rules and maybe stuff behaves differently in your universe, okay, that's fine. But you have to know what it is. Why does it bend the rules? How does it bend the rules? Uh, when does it bend the rules? Like, does this bending of the rules apply in every situation or only certain situations? You know, how does this affect the people around you? Uh, who does it affect? Uh, things like that. It goes back to your six questions. You know, and also, like I was saying, though, really, if you need to live out your worlds, and you really should, you know, you should go in, you should role play talking to a character have a conversation with them your, your family will think you're weird your neighbors will think you're weird your friends will think you're weird but that is part of the creative process um you know and some people like i say think i'm weird that i'm sitting there like i could go out for a walk and i'm role playing something in my mind i'm role playing a scene talking to somebody having dialogue uh ironing out ideas ironing out personalities uh You know, how do they, you know, how does your character perceive the world? What do you know about them? So, again, back to your, back to the six questions again. And those six questions are paramount and foundational for everything that you will work on in your writing. So, learn how to use them. Uh, go do study, do research, interview people if you need to know things. Uh, people watch. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do to world build. Uh, you know, and if you're going along and you're writing something and you realize, well, I need an explanation. I need something that explains this particular thing. Like, uh, oh, like for Harry Potter, you know, where did his wand come from? Why was it built the way it was? You know, I don't know if they explain that in the book. But just using that as an example, maybe you have something similar. Well, you know, this wa this wood is made of a magical tree called such and such, and it comes from this area, and why is it magical, and what makes it special? Is it a living tree? Is it a sentient tree? Is it 
uh, something that was endued with magical power, or it's just like you know somebody, like adventurers took took all of their. Uh, for those of you who do RPGs and you know about the uh, the worlds where they have magic stones inside of uh, like different creatures, like you kill a goblin and he drops a magic stone, and that magic stone gives you superpowers or certain abilities and stuff. Like you pick it up, and uh, hey, look, now it gives me you know the ability to. Uh, boost my strength like allows me to run faster stuff like that well what if you get a bunch of low grade drops and you're if these guys are just running around shoving them in any tree they can to get rid of them you know they don't want to leave them around because the monster gets them then you got a big problem because now the monster just upgraded so they just decide well we're going to go up here we're going to take this tree it's got all these holes in it and we're just going to chuck them in there because the monsters aren't going to go near that tree because it's you know uh say it's uh, too sappy or the sap is poisonous or something like that. So the monsters aren't going to go near it. So they throw a bunch of these these crystals into the tree and suddenly the tree becomes sentient or becomes magically powered because of all these stones that were added to it. So basically the, the tree leveled up even though it did nothing to actually level up other than it was given a bunch of magic stones. So anyways, uh, that's all for, for this recording. Um, if you guys want any specific help with world building, how to create scenes, how to build characters, uh, how to just get into writing, let me know. Uh, I'm more than happy to help you guys. I mean, others helped me get started, and I'm happy to help others get started. So, anyhow, see you in the next video.